everyone uh, to my uh, channel uh, the joy of math and physics again um, now as you know I am really like uh, doing a lot of videos explaining the exercises of uh, Piskin and Schroeder but I would like today also to talk about a very very important theory that was there in the beginning uh, when quantum field theory was developing and namely I want to talk about Dirac hole theory uh, and Dirac hole theory is really um, has a lot of uh, very interesting features that uh, would lead would lead to um, us in the l later uh, stages uh, of uh, using these really uh, revolutionary ideas to talk about quantum field theory to talk about the vacuum as an interesting object in physics. Um, so this video will be about the Dirac hole theory and how historically the Dirac equation was derived and interpreted by Paul Dirac. And so this video is really like a, not related to the exercises of Piskin and Schroeder. So it's like a, a bit of a, um, going a, a bit to other topics that are interesting, especially for the history and the development of uh, quantum field theory. So. Um, how did the story of uh, the Dirac whole theory be started? So first Dirac he had first Dirac had uh, to derive uh, an equation that's first order in time, but also also relativist relativistically invariant. Um, and uh, we know the story like uh, Klein Gordon didn't uh, uh, do that. So um, Dirac came up with the Dirac equation, which was like really a genius idea, because it's also used. Uh, Mm, these uh, like four four component objects uh, and these matrices uh, and it was a completely different format than what was expected at the time so the Dirac equation we already know it like it's you can see it now and um, yeah it's 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 pretty beautiful and uh, pretty beautiful the pretty pretty beautiful equation now um, we know also that psi, and this is the interesting thing when we talk about quantum field theory, that psi is a four component object. And we know it's not a vector, but what we call actually a spinner. So when we talk about the Dirac equation, we mean that psi is uh, actually a four component spinner. And specifically, it's also a quantum field. That means in modern quantum field theory, we will also talk about uh, psi as an operator and then we also have to uh, psi has also to to uh, fulfill the anti commutator relations because it's an operator and because we want to quantize the theory so we has uh, and it's also a fermionic field that describes fermions therefore it should also fulfill the anti fermionic uh, sorry the 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 anti commutator relations so uh, this is how we really look at uh, the um uh, the, uh, uh, the 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 quantum field theory behind dirac equation nowadays now dirac equation in modern quantum field theory is really a classical equation of motions but when we promote psi to an uh, to um to to a field then psi also because it's an operator therefore uh, it also fulfills some time uh, time differential equations um like the heisenberg uh, equation and another uh, and other quant the other equations differential equations suitable for uh, for operators so um now in the beginning when dirac came up with the dirac equation he really didn't interpret it as a quantum field theory i mean he didn't uh, impose that psi is really a, a, an operator as we do now in the modern quantum field theory courses Instead, uh, he uh, uh, interpreted psi as really a wave function, but with four components that had strange properties, and um, uh, and because it's it's uh, uh, it's really a wave function, therefore it, it fits what people nowadays call uh, relativistic quantum mechanics and not quantum field theory, um, and. Um, so Dirac he interpreted it as a as a wave function, four component wave function, and he had to go on and try to to to, to interpret this this new uh, physics that, that, that that's uh, that's inside the Dirac equation. Um, but so now when he went on with interpreting this equation, um, he he's actually by the way um, uh, used a different format from the one that I wrote. Uh, in the previous slide, he actually used that format, 
Um, I mean, they are actually equivalent because if we define the vector alpha to be uh, minus gamma times the uh, vector of uh, the gamma matrices gamma 1, 2, and 3, then uh, if we multiply both sides by gamma 0, we actually get the other equation that I showed in the previous slide. Now, um, but in this, this form that Dirac used, we really see something interesting because if we write it in that form, then it really looks like um, a time derivative of psi is equal to a Hamiltonian times psi. And this is really a form of the Schrodinger equation. And, um, and the Hamiltonian would be then divided as uh, alpha uh, dot with gradient plus uh, mp times. And of course, there are also matrices there. And there's a matrix in the MP type, which is the unitary matrix. Now, um, uh, now this equation, as I said, uh, the Dirac equation, Dirac interpreted as uh, as really an equation for uh, 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 something that we could say as a wave function, like a four component wave function, like like in normal quantum mechanics, not really a quantum field theory. So. Um, and then, uh, of course, he will face some problems, uh, as we know, because um, the Hamiltonian, uh, uh, the Hamiltonian of that theory, um, is really is unbounded from below. And um, I mean, what what I mean by that is that it can generate eigenvalues that has that can go to minus infinity or to plus infinity uh, indefinitely. Uh, and therefore it's unbounded from below and that is really a problematic because we know from quantum mechanics we really get a ground state and then we can jump with to upper and upper states and that's not a problem and therefore we expect the st system to be stable but if it's unbounded from below then it can really uh, uh, um, descend to lower and lower states and this is really would lead to instability in the system um, and, and it's also not physical to talk about negative infinite energy. Um, in that context, we are, we are really trying to describe a free uh, relativistic particle. Um, okay, so, and, and, and we, of course, we, uh, when we want to solve, uh, um, I mean, we can look at this also when we want to solve the, the Dirac equation. Um, uh, the Dirac equation has both negative, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a first order linear equation, so it will have solutions like exponential functions, like plane wave uh, solutions, uh, and it's also for component uh, solution. So we will get something like u uh, times the exponential function um, with one uh, sign, uh, and where u is also a, sp a spinner. Uh, and this solves the differential equation uh, which give us an eigenvalue of, um, of the energy, which is uh, which is positive. Now, uh, the other solution it carries with it uh, another sign, and this really gives us a negative uh, eigenvalue. And so we have both positive that can go to infinity positive, but also can go to neg uh, infinitely negative values, and therefore the system is really unbounded. It doesn't have a ground state. And um, so how did really Dirac try to solve that? Now we know in modern quantum field theory, we solve this by imposing uh, anti-commutator relations in the field Psi. We interpret Psi as a quantum field. Therefore it's called quantum field theory. And this would really solve the problem of the unbounded Hamiltonian from below. But historically Dirac didn't think of it as a quantum field theory. So he had to, um, to really uh, come up with another idea to solve that. And this is exactly the idea behind the, the Dirac C and the Dirac Hall theory, which, has, which I will explain now. So, um, so Dirac uh, used this, uh, I mean, um, uh, used this idea of the Dirac C, which says that all these negative energy states are really the true vacuum, the true quantum vacuum of our theory. And uh, because uh, electrons are fermions and they fulfill the Pauli uh, uh, exclusion principle, when we have a, a, a Dirac C of all negative energies that are filled, then electrons really cannot move within that uh, C. So it's really uh, an entity in its own, uh, and therefore we can measure something, things that are really in relation to it. So um, only positive energy states are free, and electrons can move between them. Uh, and what, what I mean by free is that we have uh, the, the, era, the Dirac C is full of, uh, is already all the states in the, all the negative energy states are already filled. 
uh, and only positive energy states are unfilled and therefore electrons can uh, jump between these energy states. Um, and uh, we, we can try to visualize this, of course, in the in the in, to see clearly what 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 I mean by that. Uh, so we can visualize this as really as a, um, I mean we have these red dots that represent the energy states uh, that are negative, and then of course we have these blue dots that represent the energy states that are positive. And we can see that Dirac uh, um, looked at this that all the negative energy states that are infinite they are already filled from the beginning. They represent the vacuum, and uh, uh, and all the positive energy states that have uh, unfilled. Uh, uh, um, unfilled states uh, and therefore electrons can jump in, into them um, and so we we measure w w this is a really an entity by its own and because uh, electrons fulfill the power exclusion principle they cannot really move within it because no electrons can occupy the same energy now um, uh, and then you might ask well how does that make sense that we have a quantum vacuum of like really infinite negative energies then really we we also came to the same uh, problem also with the uh, with the scalar field when we had seen that uh, scalar fields also has a vacuum energy that's infinite infinite in, infinite and we uh, we really solved this issue by saying or we really don't consider this an issue by saying because we really in physics measure all the energy differences Therefore, the vacuum energy is really, is really, uh, it's not really problematic if it's in, uh, infinite. And the same logic goes here when we have an infinite uh, Dirac C, which has infinite negative energy. It's okay, it's just an entity by its own, and it has a negative, ener negative infinite energy, but we measure always things in relation to it. Now, uh, this is one aspect. The other aspect, you can also say, uh, we, we can also renormalize these negative energies with the, for example, other vacuum that uh, vacuum energies that come from other fields or, 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 or from the vacuum uh, or, or the, the vacuum energy due to the Heisenberg uncertainty. Um, so one can also argue like this. Uh, and, um, and so then Dirac came up with this idea of the Dirac C as being like an entity by its own, and it was the first attempt to really look at vacuum as something as an entity that's it's it's that is really its own has its own uh, uh, um, complexity um, in modern quantum theories and um, uh, and now the interesting thing is that if we if we agree with Dirac then Dirac would now ask uh, what happens now if for all these uh, 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 negative uh, occupied energies suddenly there is a photon with uh, that came and interacts with these, uh, um, uh, I mean, some inter electromagnetic radiation, basically, and interacts with these filled uh, negative energy states. Now, in that case, the energy, if it's like a suitable energy, like the the uh, the negative energy state could absorb the energy of the photon, and then will have a higher energy, and therefore can jump up to the um, to the uh, unoccupied positive energy states. And therefore, we would really have uh, um, now uh, a new filled uh, positive energy state. And the interesting thing is, um, we have now two entities, two new entities. We have now uh, not really new entities, so we have only one new entity. So th this red dot that's become now in the filled energy state um, is really just like normal electrons, what we were really consider electrons. But now this interesting hole uh, is something that's new, that it has some new interesting behavior because now it has actually negative energy, um, but sorry, it, it has actually positive energy because now we measure things to the in relation to the vacuum. So we have minus infinity uh, and then we subtract from it some minus uh, energy, then we get in the end some positive difference. So we have, um, so, so this we consider like having a positive energy, this new entity that we call a hole, for example. Now, Dirac thought of this hole really as having all the requirements for being an int and an, a particle by its own, because as we say, we have it's on energy because we subtract some little mass from the uh, from the Dirac C. It also has its own mass, so it's really a particle, and it will have also the opposite spin 
of the other of, of the positive energy electron so it has a, a opposite quantum numbers to the uh, the positive energy uh, electron and therefore Dirac didn't know what really to do with this new, new interesting particle I mean we have either electrons that have a negative um, sorry that have a negative charge and this is has a positive charge so um, what is really going on what is this particle and then Dirac first suggested that might maybe this whole hole that's described by this theory is what's the positron it's really the sorry it's sorry not the positron he thought it's actually the proton in the beginning but people knew like uh, uh, that the proton has much higher mass than the electron so it could not be the proton so the Dirac then thought again and then actually said maybe it's actually a completely new particle that has actually the opposite quantum numbers to an electron and therefore and this is exactly what people now call an antiparticle and this is really the first prediction of antimatter and this is the crazy thing about theoretical physics that it can really predict new phenomena or new um, uh, or a new kind of matter that's completely unexplored experimentally before and then turn out to be true later so this antiparticle that we actually now call uh, that we call actually the positron uh, was really experimentally uh, verified later by the famous experiment of Anderson and then both Dirac uh, and uh, Anderson actually got the Nobel prizes for all these discoveries so then we have really the, uh, the Dirac hole theory describing not only normal electrons but a completely new kind of matter which is antiparticles in that case the the anti uh, sorry the, the positrons and this is really a very nice theory. It's 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 it really comes with a very new fundamentally different um, uh, 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 concepts in physics. But we have to remember that actually this theory is not the proper way how we look at fermionic uh, uh, particle uh, particles, because the proper way how to describe them when in relative a relativistic manner is not using this Dirac hole theory because it's also a bit weak when we consider like. The, uh, the problem of the unbounded Hamiltonian because n modern quantum field theory comes with a prescription on how to avoid all these problems to avoid the unboundedness of the Hamiltonian and this is really done as we all know uh, if we studied quantum quantum field theory this is really done by uh, by using uh, the anti by promoting the uh, the spinner psi to to a field that means uh, to a quantum field that means psi is also an operator and it fulfills some quantization condition which is the anti commutating uh, commutator conditions and if we do this then uh, suddenly our Hamiltonian will not have the problem of the unbounded uh, uh, spectrum uh, and therefore we really don't need the Dirac hole theory and this is more elegant approach than the Dirac hole theory and this is what we really call modern quantum theory modern quantum field theory uh, but historically this is how it really happened this is how Dirac came up with the Dirac equation and tried to interpret it, the negative energies there and how he came tried to came with something uh, uh, that's radical and I really liked how he thought about even about it even though we now uh, know that it's not the best approach uh, but it was really nice to talk about it and I hope you enjoyed that really nice uh, 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 maybe you have enjoyed uh, me talking about this theory and uh, looking forward uh, to um, to making new videos about uh, uh, the history of quantum field theories and um, see you again in the next one